All right, guys. What's up? This is David from Apple Job. I was on line strolling and checking out the news, real estate news, and I came across this interesting article, which you, most of the time, 90% of the stuff that you find on, uh, I'll say 99% of the stuff that you see online about real estate is BS crap. They don't know what they're talking about. Well, we're going to discuss this today. And um, we're going to see on a one to 10 scale, how true is this article? Someone said this is the best real estate article they've ever read. read. All right. So 15 crazy real estate myths your clients probably believe. People don't know what they don't know. And what they do know is enough to create false perceptions. So this is true. Uh, a lot of people like even myself back in the day when I was a child in my teen years and everything like that. And like everybody, everyday life, everybody, like even in my adult life, before I got into what I do now, before I got into real estate and marketing, everybody just thinks from the outside, maybe it's the suits, maybe it's because they're always busy or something like that. I don't know. Everybody thinks they're real estate agents or realtors, period, just have it all together. They have a lot of money and they just live the perfect life. That's what everybody thinks. So a lot of the time, that is not the truth. I say 95% of the time, that is not the truth. All right, so we're gonna go through some of these myths and we're gonna see if they're true or false. Okay, so number one, real estate agents are paid a salary. Hey, I will link to this article in the, the description. You guys can go and read it if you want to, all right? Uh, make sure you guys stay to the end because this is pretty good, pretty good. You're, you're going to uh, love and relate to what I'm talking about what this article is talking about. Real estate agents are paid on the salary. So people think that real estate agents are paid on a salary for some reason. But if they were paid on the salary, they weren't, wouldn't be so stressed and, and freaking busy at that time. Despite what many people think, the public is horribly confused about how agents make a living. There must be a salary floating in the background that supports agents, all right? So yeah, no, no salary, all right? So let's get down here. See, there is no base salary or reimbursement for the time. So basically, you have a, a commission job like any other sales position, only you have the opportunity to make a huge commission that most sales jobs don't allow. All right, so let's come down here. Number two, the agent keeps all the commission. Well, I can tell you that's wrong. Uh, that's definitely wrong. So the, the, the brokerage takes a lot of it. And that's one of the complaints I get about a lot of my clients. So what I tell them is you need to increase lead volume, you need to close more deals, or you need to break off and go out on your own, open your own brokerage firm, or just be a solo. Or you can do uh, virtual wholesaling. There's a whole bunch of different options you can do if you're tired of getting your commissions swiped. All right. But yeah, the agent does not keep all of the commission. The typical commission is 6%, right? Uh, no. All right, speaking of which, I recently had someone ask the exact same question, standard 6%. That is not true. Every market is different. I like that. I like how they put that. I know some people get 15. All right, and agents, gas, mileage, and transportation expenses are reimbursed. Yeah, maybe if you're doing it in your taxes, like you're claiming it as one of those type of deals right there. But yeah, you got to do it. See, here it is. It's all on the agent. So a lot of you guys can relate to this article right here. A lot of people think that since you're driving around and driving for dollars, this is why I always urge you guys to get your online presence established uh, because you don't need to be driving for dollars. That's some old school 1980s stuff. Like <laughs> all of your clientele is online. I mean, that's where you need to be. That's where you need to be. Hopefully you guys are, are understanding that. Like, please get yourself an online presence so that people can come to you, okay? Marketing expenses aren't the agent's responsibility. But like I said, if you're solo, then you can deal with that. But most brokerages, they're, they're not ha having that. Like a lot of laws come into place as well. Like I know people that can't even accept leads and stuff like that. But yeah, marketing is brought on, you know, by the agents. Like they're not going to get some sponsors or anything like that like the agents aren't going to get some stipend 
uh, or anything like that. There is, think of it as a, like a, a, a rental booth at a hair salon. That's the only thing a brokerage, uh, a lot, you know, supplies for you the name brand and everything like that. You can be affiliated with and everything like that. Other than that, everything is on you. Okay. All right. Uh, home passes or fails inspection. An inspection is meant to assess the condition of a home. An inspector doesn't pass or fail a home. He or she will provide a report explaining all the issues. Blah 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 blah. I don't even know what that means. Okay. Inspectors have to find something, don't they? Speaking of inspection, no one likes the ideas of someone crawling around their home. Yeah, we know. All right, inspectors are hired by the buyer to do the independent. See, so the agent isn't doing it. The inspection is hired from the buyer. Most people should know that. Yep, most people should know that. All right, so let's move on. Weekends bring out the most serious buyers. <laughs> Excuse the fake laugh, but uh, that's a lot, okay? Contrary to popular belief, weekends don't usually bring out the most serious buyers and ready to buy buyers. Like, you gotta think about it. Think about the psychology. I always tell you guys to use psychology in your sales methods. Use psychology in your strategies, all right? Like on a weekend, nobody is really buyer enforced. What I mean by that, the mentality is relaxed. You've been working all week. like. See, the funny thing is all week you say, I can't wait to be off. I'm going to buy this. When I get my check, I'm going to buy that. I'm going to buy that. But when you get off, you really just want to lay there. You really, you remember that you're supposed to go to this open house, but you're like, Ugh. so no, actually the, the, the hype is points in time. The more, the most commissions and sales that I've made is during the week. Like maybe they get off work or take a break and come out or, or, or something or facts over information or something like that. It's during a week when they're most stressed and miserable and desperate to get away from work. That's when the buying is happening, when people are trying to make life changes. On a weekend, you can forget about all your problems. So no. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. All right. Zillow says, therefore it is. We're not even going to go into this. We already know that Zillow is a load of crap. Uh, I'm just letting you guys know. You need to build your own properties out here. Build your own brand. Don't become a slave to uh, brands like Zillow, Realtor.com, and Truly, and all of that, so they can give you the crap. You know, they're gonna give you the crap, and they're giving you shared leads and stuff. So we're not even dealing with that. Like most of the clients think, if it's on Zillow, then everything is legitimate. That's not where it's at. You might have more insight on it than them. It is better to price a home on the high side as the seller can always come down. That is a lie as well. That's a lie. That's a lie. My thing is the buyer. But maybe you do it different. All right? So the good thing is this. Let's say you give the seller what they want, but maybe your upfront commission that you get isn't as great as you want it. You could have talked them down, but you didn't. You got to think about your future, right? All right. The most powerful form of marketing is word of mouth. If you get that seller what they wanted or more than what they wanted, then they're going to tell the world who sold their house. All right. Think about that type of review or testimony. All right. So we're always thinking about you know, talking the seller down. No, 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 no. Talk that damn buyer up. Sell that dream of what they can do with it. What they can do with that property. Yo, if you had a floor plan like this, man, like just a couple more additions like that, yo, this will be worth, you can make, yo, the after repair value will be worth 10 times more than what they're selling it for. Hey, hey, hey. You see what I'm saying? So don't always try to talk the seller down. Talk the buyer up. Talk the buyer up, okay? When making an offer on a home, you need to start with a low offer. That's, that's yo, that, that's, that's dumb too. That's dumb too. I always tell you to start with a fair offer. So uh, I know you guys are trained to talking people up, the seller up. But remember, most of the time, they need it, all right? Most of the time, they need this situation to happen. So it'll be way more legitimate for you to talk the buyer up instead, okay? So give the seller what's fair, but keep the buyer happy as well. 
you have to sell that dream. You shouldn't be selling crap homes any damn way, to tell you the truth. So sell them a home that they can dream on. There's a lot of things they can do with it, whether it's going to be a rental or whether they're going to be actually living out of it. Sell that dream. That way you can talk the buyer up, but keep the seller happy because that's your mouthpiece. Okay? So yeah, that's a misconception. You don't start with a low offer. You start with a fair offer. Start with a fair offer. Now, if that seller is coming to you and they're talking like, yo, 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 give me anything, then I'm you got to just use your wisdom on that. You know what I'm saying? You use your wisdom. All right. The longer a home is on the market, the more negotiable the deal. Now, this is one I fell for at the beginning, too. <laughs> hey. Every case is different. You would think that, hey, nobody's looked at your house for two years. You should uh, go ahead and give it to me for 15. You know, like you, you would think that they'll just take it because there's no eyeballs on it. But some people are stubborn and they put a lot of money and years and sentimental value into their properties and stuff like that. So they're not really trying to just let it go for a chump change. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, they'll stand on it. A lot of people will just stand on it. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, uh, then they're, they're putting themselves in a position where it's just going to be sitting there any longer. So it's about a battle of who wants to blink first. That's pretty much all it is. You know, eventually, if they really want to get it sold, they'll blink, you know. But if they if they got time and you fall first, then they're going to they're gonna win. All right. So that's pretty much what it's about. Multiple price reductions mean the seller is desperate to sell. Well, majority of the time, yes, that is what that means. I don't care what they say, but often when a seller has done several price reductions, it means they are through with negotiation. Yeah, but yeah, it could be inspection reasons. It can be a miscalculations in ARV. It could be a number of reasons, but majority of the time, they're not getting any bites. They don't really know how to do good marketing because I could sell a crap home if I needed to. If you can get traffic, then you can get sales. But anyway, yeah, you shouldn't have a stubborn property. All right. But yes, you know, sometimes they're desperate. Sometimes they're just talking to themselves and saying, well, you know what? Maybe I am being unreasonable, you know. All right, let's go. Multiple offers give the sellers an advantage. Uh, well, actually, it's kind of a scary thing, you know, for the for the seller because they don't know who to take. Like, they can agree with you and then lose all on this buyer, and then the one that said that they were going to go ahead and pay uh, more backs out or whatever, and they already lost the other buyer. You know what I'm saying? So it's not always a beautiful thing to have multiple offers as a seller, you know, they think it is at the beginning, but then it becomes kind of stressful or whatever, because they can make the wrong choice and end up playing themselves, trying to uh, be greedy, you know what I'm saying? So it just depends. Like I said, there's a case by case situation right here, because if they take too long, see, that's another thing. If they take too long making a decision, or they're trying to weigh their options on the Libra scale, then everybody could just go away. Like all of the ones they had on the hook, they got four or five people. But if they like, okay, let me weigh my options and they waiting three, four uh, weeks, you know, and that buyer, they have some hot buyers and they're ready to give their money to somebody. They're just going to leave, you know? So eh, it's not always great to have multiple. I'd rather have a very great buyer, you know, one that's just ready to go. They got, gave me a very legitimate offer that I can be happy with. All right, so that's that's what they should pray for. All right, last but not least, all agents are the same. That is wrong. Now, sometimes all agents look the same, and this is the part where I always try to educate you guys. Stop positioning yourself. There's uh, three levels to wealth, three levels to success in what you're doing. It doesn't matter what industry it is, but definitely in real estate, all right? And those levels are this. Pay attention, write them down positioning. Number two, leveraging others. Number three, profiting. All right. Positioning number one, let me break it down. If you position yourself as the top or only realtor in that area, and I'm going to explain that in a minute, then your potential clients have nowhere else to go. The prospects have nobody else to uh, buy or sell with. Do you guys understand that? I hope so. Make a Type of, type of one in the comments, not even a one, just say I understand. 
say I understand. Comment, engage with me. Let me know that I ain't just doing this stuff in vain. All right. All right. Don't be shy. If you understand, comment that you understand. All right. So if you position yourself properly, you don't have to do too much talking or selling. Now, guess what? Put you right next to another realtor. If you're positioned, like let's say you go to Google and and I, and, and we type in the top realtors in your city, and you pop up. But you don't just pop up once, you pop up four or five times on the first page of Google. That client or potential client is going to automatically assume you have the most authority in that area as a realtor. Like, wow, Google put them on here four or five damn times versus the other people might be on there once. All right. So it's about positioning. So who do you think they're going to want to sell with? Everybody is deep in idolatry. They like this is the this is the age the the era of of uh, superstars and 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 idols and stuff like that. So if you can become the local celebrity realtor of your area, then people will buy or sell with you just to be able to say they worked with you. Think about it, Gordon Ramsay. People put their nasty restaurant kitchens on TV, embarrassing themselves just to be able to say, "Oh my God." Gordon Ramsay came through and I was on TV and blah, blah, blah. It's about positioning. And now a lot of those restaurants that fix their act, they're the most famous restaurants in that city. So use that with yourself. Forget billboards, forget all of that crap that people are doing with the benches and everything in the side of the bus. No, no, no. People Google things. If you can plaster yourself on Google as if it's a billboard, if you can always be in someone's news feed, as if that's an online billboard, then you are positioned properly to where you are not the same as all agents. All other agents that don't know any better are on Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia, just doing basic Facebook ads and thinking they're doing something, doing door knocking, cold calling, buying lists, buying stupid leads from, from agencies that don't know what the hell they're doing and everything like that. Uh, spending $500 on a marketing campaign and thinking they're going to be a millionaire afterwards and then getting mad when they don't make any good results, okay? So that's what all the other agents are doing. You're smarter than that. If you're watching this right now still, you're smarter than that. You're going to do something completely different, all right? So those were the 15 crazy myths that your clients probably believe, all right? So you, you guys type in the comments. On a 1 to 10 scale, how true do you think this article was? Was it valuable to you guys? Like, do you feel this? Are you uh, relatable to this article? Like, do you reach people that end up thinking that these things are your actual real life? Do they think you got it together? Do they think, uh, like, the company pays for your gas and tips and all of this extra stuff? Do they think that every agent is the same? If so, you're going to have to change that perception, all right? So, uh, I enjoyed talking to you guys about this story right here. What I want you to do is take check out the links in the description. We have the option. If you want to learn real estate and get licensed or do virtual wholesaling and flip houses where you do not have to even uh, work on any properties or own the property or invest in a property, then we teach that. But if you need real estate lead generation, we also have a link to that in the description of this video. So go ahead. Don't deprive yourself. Revive yourself. We will talk to you in the next one.